and I pass her to Abhinav. Abhinav, I've started the recording. I can just you can uh, uh, share your uh, the intro to the the speaker. Uh, you are mute. Are you on mute? Sorry, Aro. Thanks so much. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah. Good, <laughs> Thank good. you so much, yeah. Aro. Yeah. And really excited how the day is uh, turning and. Uh, we are having amazing speakers here. Uh, I would like to welcome Sankova Sina, uh, and uh, uh, she's a program manager for BI CAT team. I see her posts often and uh, to the links, various links and informational posts on LinkedIn. And uh, it's a delight to learn from those. Uh, and uh, really uh, excited to you know now hear you uh, on Power BI for end users. Um, that's a topic for you know uh, pretty close to my heart. I started my journey back in 2015 with this and you know so uh would like to welcome you here and the uh, stage is yours thank you Abhinav. um i'll start sharing and then maybe i'll speak um keep a moment that's okay um let me know if you're able to see this is another laptop so um are you able to see me or uh, and the and my we, we can screen. see it we can see perfect good good um so hi everybody thanks Avinav, and thanks uh the lipao bi um user group for this opportunity um i i think it's great um to be able to interact with you and and share with you today um uh, so today's session is on power bi for end users and i just wanted to give you a context of why I put this as my talking uh, point today. I've seen, I've worked with a number of customers and I was working as a customer, you know, um, earlier. And I've seen there's a very thin line um, on what an end user should do or what a BI developer or a citizen self-service developer should do. And I see that there, there are kind of uh, mixed responsibilities, but in this session, I just wanted to highlight the consumption feature uh, and want to stress on it that how developed the consumption feature is, a, is in Power BI, apart from all the development work that you do in Power BI, right? Good. Let's move in and give me, uh, I'll give you my quick introduction. I'm Siang Prova. You can call me Swayam. Um, I'm a program manager at Microsoft. Uh, I work with the Power BI customer advisory team. This team is a part of product team and we engage with large customers um, to help drive their Power BI adoption journey in their organization. Um, prior to this, I was working with Unilever. I was leading the team from uh, Bangalore. The team is um, Global Power BI Center of Excellence team. I was leading the team from Bangalore. And um, you know what? Uh, I, I, I have a great 13 years of experience. I mean, great experience of working with MSBI suit um, uh, more than 13 years. And it has been a wonderful journey working with data. I think um, I think all of you will agree how interesting it's getting in this um, in the space of data and AI, right? Good. Um, so just to confirm if you're able to see my screen and hear me okay, I will move on to the session. Yes, um, we are on, yeah. Good, good, um, okay. So I would like to start by defining what are report consumers, what are end users, right? Now, how you interact with Power BI depends upon your job role, clearly. As a report consumer or a business user, at a lot of times, you don't have to create dashboards reports, right? You instead um, receive those contents, the reports, dashboards, et cetera, from your colleagues and you start exploring, analyzing in Power BI Mobile or in Power BI Service, right? Your area of expertise uh, lies in, you know, exploring the data, filtering, slicing, dicing, subscribing, exporting, just to support the business decisions. So gaining insights out of the data to help in dec decision making within your organization. Now, as you review and uh, uh, explore, you do, are not making any changes in the backend or data set or even in the report, right? So it is very clear the report consumers would be con for the consumption consumption experience in Power BI service, right? When I talk of Power BI service, what's Power BI service? And I think all of us might have an idea. We talk about Power BI service as a software as a service. Ah, yeah, I mean, let's consider in small, simple terms, why not 
um, it, why not tell that it's a web application which can be browsed over internet, right? I prefer to tell it to my first time learners because software as a service um, is, is quite a difficult term to um, uh, fathom. So, um, so in, so in Power BI service or Power BI online as it is also called, serves as a consumption layer where you can, as a Power BI report consumer can go there and explore the data, um, you know, uh, see the reports that are shared with you, see the data sets that are shared with you and explore them, right? Now, Power BI service is just not limited to viewing content. You definitely can create artifacts there. Um, there are data flows, data marts, uh, where there are um, creation capabilities or authoring capabilities, right? However, uh, I think we will stick to the consumption layer only. We are very much consumption focused today, okay? In the 30 minutes. Um, so uh, I think the next question that report consumers generally come up with is, okay, how do I know what is shared with me? How do we find our content, right? Now, Power BI service does give you, and I'll show you in the next demo, it's, it's, it's just a demo, this slide and another slide, but the whole session is for demo. So I'll show you how end users can find their content in Power BI service. Usually when a report builder or a report author shares a report with you, or your IT shares a report with you, it will show up in Power BI service. But generally what happens is you might receive an email with the report link or the app link, Power BI app link. Or um, sometimes what happens, you receive a link from your colleague. Uh, most of the times, and of course, all the times you will find it in Power BI service, but you might receive a report link from somewhere. You might not have access to it sometimes, but you know there is a way you can request access to it. So how you can find your content is on Power BI service through emails, uh, uh, which you receive from Microsoft Power BI when report author shares it with you. And of course, um, if you don't have access to anything or any link or any report, you can always request for it, right? So, um, okay, I'll stop talking. Let's move on to one of uh, showing you how Power BI service looks like and where you can find your content um, uh, in Power BI service. Um, can you see my screen still? Should be. Can any one of you confirm, please? Yes, we can see your screen. So thank you. Um, okay, so the moment you uh, log into Power BI, you will be welcomed in your um, uh, a designated homepage, uh, which is tailor cut for you. There is not uh, um, there is not many ways that you can uh, do it yourself. Uh, I think there are capabilities that are going to come where you can design your own homepage. You know what you want, what are the recommendations you want, what kind of recommendations you want, and it might be coming um, in in the recent future. However, right now it's being tailored for you automatically. You will see there, there is recommended sessions and uh, favorites, my apps. I will go through all of them. Uh, 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 stay with me, please. Um, so before, before anything, before I go ahead, I would like to show you the license section. It's very important because end users do end up asking, what license do I have? Am I a free license uh, a user? Am I a pro user, PP user? Because a lot of licensing discussions goes on within the organization for Power BI because uh, report users, consumers, at the end of the day, I think, move on to be the citizen BI developers because they want to change something in the existing uh, reporting capabilities, etc. So let's, let's understand a little bit about uh, the license. So where would you like to see uh, the license, you will be able to see it here, uh, here uh, where um, your profile information is there. You'll see that <clears throat> I do have a license type, which is pro. Uh, pro and PPU uh, will be, um, will, is user-based license. So it's generally for every user. Uh, then what is premium that you hear of? Premium is a storage-based license here and you would not be able to see it here. The only way that you can understand whether a workspace or a report is in premium is by um, the diamond icon that you can see see here. So here I have a diamond icon with a, a small 
person, but uh, just the diamond icon will mean uh, premium. And the diamond icon with um, this this uh, small I person logo is is PPU. Okay, so um, as simple as that. You can either be a pro, a or a PPU holder or a free user. Generally, report consumers are free user, but definitely you can ask for pro in your organization if you are moving yourself uh, um, to. Um, sorry, uh, if, if if generally it's a free user if people if organizations have premium capacity, but you definitely can have pro if your organizations are running is running or totally on pro licenses, right? So pro license is required for publishing. Uh, uh, for for sharing, for collaboration, and also for consumption, if the report that is shared is on pro, right? As simple as that. Now, so coming to my question on where do I find all the shared content um, that all the content that's shared to me is in browse section. In the browse section, you will see all the recently accessed items, all the fav favorite items I haven't. Uh, uh, favoritized yet, and all the reports that are shared with me. Right, these are the reports that are shared with me, and I'll have a look at all of them. Now, remember, here I will only have a report or a dashboard which is shared with me. What about Power BI apps? Power BI apps, I can find it here. Generally, what happens, an organization can decide whether they want to push the apps to the end users or they would like the end users to install on their own. Whenever if you, you receive an email saying this Power BI app is shared with you, you can just click the link and it will get automatically installed. Or it might also happen that the app is already installed. And if you still, if you click the link, it will say the app is already installed. Okay, so there are two ways that you can see. So, and I'll explain what app is, but uh, 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 let me reiterate what I said. The content that's shared with you will you will either find in browse section or an app section. Okay, apps are um, as it said collection of dashboards and reports. Um, so it's tailored made for you uh, specifically saying okay you need to access only three reports two dashboards let me collect them into one uh, uh, bundle and share it with you. Right, you might not need the other two so those are not shared with you. So apps can be configured um, separately for separate sets of users, and uh, it's it's called um, multiple audience feature in Power BI apps, right? Okay. Good. Um, let me highlight because it's one more important thing for report users. Report users would like to learn more, right? What, how everything is done. I think Learning Center has been great inclusion for. Um, if for for in Power BI service for any of us, I think it can be a BI developer, uh, Power BI developer, or even uh, you know advanced users. This is where you find all your learning content. The learning content is being uh, revised and updated regularly. You will have sample reports where you, if you want to show and tell uh, on the capabilities of Power BI, you can also do that, right? Um, you have all your webinars here. If you want to register for a webinar, all the details are here. Uh, if you want to attend a dashboard in a day workshop, I would like to hide this. Dashboard in a day workshop is a great place to start on how to be a report author uh, or a dashboard developer. Um, and paginated reports in a day is also uh, great because I think um, it. The moment paginated reports came into uh, Pro, we saw a huge jump in the use of paginated reports. Paginated reports are getting uh, quite the attention that it deserves. And uh, go ahead and attend this workshop. It's absolutely brilliant. OK. Uh, workspaces. Now, you might have access to the workspaces, too, if you are given um, access to the workspaces by report authors. Uh, workspace access generally means that you have access to all the contents in a workspace, irrespective whether that's just getting developed, it's in development phase or in testing phase, you have access to all the contents. Um, therefore, it, you, you, might, uh, you might need to know which 
workspace you have access to or in which reports you really need to look into to find the correct data right okay um so and you might have capability to uh, create new workspaces um, based on whether you have appropriate access and license or not. Okay. Good. Um, so we have seen uh, Power BI service. Let's let's dive into a report. Um, I think we would like to see how a report is being analyzed in our case, right? Um, so let's dive into that. Um, so I have a report uh, which is called okay, Contoso Demo. Um, this is a data set which is absolutely popularly available in your um, in in, um, in in internet. You can just browse it for any kind of data for a sample data set that you need, right? So you might have seen this report, and this is a commonly found report over internet. Um, I I did not create it myself uh, for your information, um, but yes, I did add some of the components to describe. On this call. Now, if you see this report as a report consumer, what is the first thing that you would like to do? Of course, filtering. Now, I do have a slicer pane here where I can filter the data, or what I can do, there is a filter pane which is already available for me here. Okay. And um, those, so you can see that there are filters on this page and filters on all the pages. So when I say filters on all the pages, it will uh, filter for each one of the page here okay so you will see this also filters for australia right uh if i just filter for this page uh suppose store name as um contoso i think there's no data for here isn't it yeah so i'll just put it for contoso and there is no data for 27 let's put up 20. So and um, so there might not be some for data, some data for um, other province. Let's me let me check for Canada maybe. Ah, no data. I don't know what data is there for other countries. Okay, whatever. So um, so if you see um, the whole report is being filtered uh, based on filters on this page and filter on all the pages, right? So why to use why to use slicer pane slices like this at all when filter pane is there i think that's a very good question now filter pane remember is the out of box capability given by microsoft and i think it's brilliant because it gives you advanced filtering capabilities you can do basic filtering advanced filtering you know on string on dates it's it's absolutely good and it's performant it's not performant performance intensive too you would see the filter panes perform much, much more faster than if you have slicers on your pane. So I would recommend whenever you ask your report, when you talk with your report authors um, regarding the requirements, do stress on the fact that, provi that to provide uh, filter panes rather than having slicer like this. Okay. Remember, also remember that Power BI has this by, by default capability of cross filtering across reports. So suppose if I have, um, if I already have continent, uh, continent column here, which I can filter through, why would I like to have a continent filter again in my filter pane? I would rather um, go ahead and, um, you know, filter with my visual rather having it on the filter pane. Right. So these are the factors, important factors to consider for designing a better report. Remember, better, good design of a report by a report author will at last serve the end users. End users would not like a lot of information inside a report, would not like slow performing uh, reports. What they want is correct info, um, a good storytelling and, or, and a performance report. Right. That's the simple need of an end user. Good. I think there are some other important things that also needs to be kept in mind. Um, if you look for, if, if you think that you have some as visual like this, where you can ask a question about your data, or uh, which I will cover a little bit later, you, please utilize these. Uh, I under, we all understand not all the visuals might uh, fulfill the requirement of the end user. 
Therefore, report authors should always give the uh, flexibility to include uh, Q&A with data. Uh, and of course, there's something called as personalized visuals, which I would like to show you in another visual um, in a minute, okay? Um, so here it is. Um, you can slice and dice, explore, you know, uh, and I'll come to collaboration part, but if you can see the UR, there are various ways to get insights. For example, if I see why my, um, year-on-year uh, -year net profit percentage has increased from um, February 2008 to Mar April 2008, I can always right-click and say analyze and explain the increase, why it has increased from February 2008 to April 2008. So it will go ahead and explain, not exactly explain, but give me the factors or uh, the dimensions that are responsible for this change, right? So and you can see um, that the factors that uh, that's responsible for this change is uh, uh, regular um, and economy, right? Uh, regular plays a, a major factor, but economy is the one which is increasing a lot. Uh, regular, yes, it's it's I would say um, uh, uh, had a significant impact on um, the increase in class name, and and there there are innumerable factors that. Um, in internal Power BI algorithms will present to you, right? Why not? Why not utilize these insights to gain more? I have seen report users saying, okay, uh, I can see the increase, but I cannot see why it is increased. And the report users go back saying, I need more visuals. I need drill down. I need um, uh, drill through to understand detail level. Ah. No, if you think such a capable, if you know that such a capability or analyze increase, uh, analyze is there, where you can explain the increase and find where distribution is different, why to ask for those? Just go ahead and explore these options and see whether you can get your answers or not, right? So you can do, you can do more with less. That's one of the main, uh, uh, <laughs> main slogans in Power BI, do more with less, right? Good. And if you see here also, uh, I can find um, it, it. it's there in a lot of, I think, most of the visuals, but definitely depends upon visual to visual, whether there is some insight that can be generated or not. In here also, if you can see um, whether um, I want to check whether um, how my net profits, why my net profits are actually running totally is actually increasing from a giant to Feb, I can always um, go and say, find where the distribution is different and it will give you another, okay, there's no insight found, but um, definitely you can, uh, if it if something is there, you can definitely go ahead and look. Okay, so there it is. Um, there are already automated insights available. Go ahead and utilize it. Uh, remember, you can have extra insights that's available to you, right? Good, uh, apart from that, um, Apart from that, uh, we can always, um, you know, filter and sort a report, as I already mentioned. Um, there may be buttons or bookmarks which can, uh, uh, which can, um, uh, um, which which can be given by report authors to utilize. Um, I would like to show you some one more thing, and I don't know why did I go with that. Let's um, let's go to another report where I would like to show something um, special. Uh, so there is something called as personalized visuals and it's my favorite, remember, because at the end of the day, uh, report, as I said, end users might not have the idea what they want until unless they see the data. You cannot have all kinds of visuals in your report. So why not give the flexibility to end users to personalize their own visuals? What personalized means is you can design your own, uh, 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 what do we say, visual uh, with this capability. When I say, okay, I want to change this to suppose area chart and I don't want country on X axis, maybe I would like something called as group, uh, which is fine. And then I can add country if I would like to have a um, uh, uh, drill down or drill up kind of uh, uh, capability. Okay, and uh, and 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 I can change it as as I need, right? Sorry, is 
Do you have a question? I can take questions at the end. Give me five minutes. I'll be finished very soon. So this personalized capability is a huge chance, huge uh, um, feature, I believe. Nowadays, I see almost all the reports having personalized visuals where they uh, you know, give this flexibility to this um, uh, end users to create their own and save it as they want. Now you can save it as your personal bookmark, OK? Good. Now let's go back to that report because it's convenient for me. Um, and let me show you some of the uh, uh, collaboration features that are there, right? Now, collaboration, um, I feel, um, is very important because how we have worked has changed considerably. Currently, we cannot make a, sing a decision on our own, we definitely have to get others perspective, show them the data of why we have taken this uh, uh, decision based on data, right? So we have to collaborate continuously within individuals, within teams in an organization. And I think it also promotes data culture in an organization. So collaboration is key, right? Um, uh, so how to do, how to go ahead with the collaboration uh, best practices? Um, I mean, let me show you something here. So for a visual which has uh, recently, uh, just recently come in, you can just go ahead and share a visual uh, and chat in Teams. Uh, you can open in PowerPoint or just link to the, uh, uh, have a link to the selection. Remember when you do this, um, it will get the link and add it into your Teams channel. Now, when I say this, uh, I mean this just this visual, not the whole report. So you can spotlight a visual, share the data in that, filter the uh, visual, and can share it with your team members, right? Not only this, this you can directly share your report with uh, um, with teams here in any Teams channel. Um, what you can also do is one of the biggest feature and most used feature would be commenting. Now, commenting is a I think it, it clashes with the principle of teams, um, but it does provide a huge benefit over uh, um, teams as in you can always um, collaborate on Power BI service, right? Um, I have seen commenting uh, feature is being now um, less utilized as, and more utilized as you know chatting teams feature. So we'll not talk about it. However, you can always tag people here and talk about a visual, spotlight a visual, et cetera, right? You can have your own bookmarks too, right? Uh, you filter um, on, on some region or category and say, okay, I would like to bookmark my, keep my own personal bookmark as this, right? Uh, you can of course subscribe yourself um, in a, for this report and you can, um, uh, uh, you can get daily uh, alerts or you know the frequency that you decide to get subscribe subscription in you can get alerts on that you can export it to excel uh, you can analyze in excel you can embed in powerpoint uh, which is live embed in powerpoint where you can um, you know change filters on the go while you are actually showing it to your end users right this is very exciting uh, an exciting period for end users where there are huge capabilities the only way to learn all of them is to go ahead and play around. Remember what I said, you cannot change the underlying data set. You cannot change um, the reports that already is there until unless you have access to in quotes. So go ahead and play around. You will see there are lots of features that everybody discovers every day new. I discover everything new and, and whenever I do it, I try to share. Um, so it's it's, an absolutely brilliant capability given by uh, given by Power BI. Leverage this. I'm quite sure uh, the the insights that you get, um, the the data that's already there, you can get more insights um, than you than your report author has presented uh, you in a way. So that's all. I did not have anything else. Um, uh, I think. Um, this is what I wanted to say. Um, do you have any questions? Uh, yes, ma'am. Hello. Yes, go ahead. Uh, ma'am, in a uh, uh, live project, suppose you have a very large data, large amount of data, and you want yep. to uh, build a report on that. 
but you can't impose that data because there is a limitation, right? And if you go the uh, live uh, data, is uh, uh, there is yeah. another option. With, huh? So yeah, yeah. you will get the less less features on that. Yes, sir. You can't add the um, uh, additional tables or because you you don't have storage, no? So how you can how you handle that situation because you have large data and you can't import that. Okay, I'm expecting when you say large data, you already know that, uh, and and when you say large data, you might already know that there are best practices to reduce the data. There are data reduction techniques, and you have already applied that. Say that you have all the best practices applied. Still, you have large data. There are only two options. One which you have already mentioned is direct query. Direct query, yes, um, it it comes with less features in terms of modeling in terms of you know what uh, uh, what are the DAX you can use, but it's still very performant. I would say there are a huge amount of direct query investments that's going on in Microsoft. And um, I have, I think I'll, I'll post a series of links where I can, where there are huge improvements going on in direct per query performance. That's one. However, yes, I do agree there are less features um, and, uh, or, 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 you know, and sometimes it would be slow if you add calculated columns, etc. And of course, you cannot use calculated tables. But then there is only one way. If you have large data, you have to take PPU or premium. I know it's costly, but then you can always start with an A1 SKU, Power BI embedded SKU. So... Uh, at the end of the day, if you have large data, that means you are an organization who works with large data. You definitely need to have a PPU or a premium license. Thank you. Yeah, anything else? I, I think. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll just see. Uh, I'm not sure if there's any other questions in the chat. I think um, there's a question. If I share a tile I mean, in PowerPoint, will it be yeah, just, dynamic? Just yeah, just <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Um, so if you share a tile, when I think when you say a tile, it's just a visual. Um, so if you have just a visual in PowerPoint, I don't think it's uh, dynamic because what dynamic uh, what 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 dynamism do you want? If I share a bar, what how should it affect the others? So if you just share a visual, it should be static. However, if you share the whole report as in live embedded report in PowerPoint, it is filterable. So if you click one visual, it will filter or cross highlight other visuals in the PowerPoint or in the report page. It's very interesting. I'm checking YouTube. Uh, no questions there. So <laughs> I hope that addresses uh, it, uh, Eric. And thanks so much for asking those questions. And thanks so, so much for your time. Uh, this is a topic pretty so close to my heart. And uh, I hope people my have time. learned a lot from here. Uh, so Power BI, you know, is in adoption is increasing by the day. I recall from 1,000 users in 2015 to now over 5 million currently subscribers. So you see the immense potential this platform has and uh, how it is improving by the day. So thank you so much for your time today, Swam. Uh, it was a pleasure hosting you thank and you, uh, uh, have you. a wonderful weekend. You too. Please take care.